since I was a kid. It's kind of, it's kind of awkward. If you look closely, very closely at the horizon astern, you might see a bit of mast and sail, a boat that I've been trying to get away from all day. I put a little distance on it, but it's a little a reminder that uh, that the competition is out here. This wind is from the north uh, or the north northwest. It's certainly different from any wind I remember four years ago. I was using my drifter today to. Uh, take advantage of the light air and while I was taking one of my naps the, uh, the puff of wind hit us and tore the uh, sail out by the tapes so I've lost the use of that. I don't think that damn film was advancing. So should we try again? are so different, it's a completely different race. These consistent northerly winds are really something. It's the last thing I expected out here. It makes me wonder whether I shouldn't go further south now while it's easy to get south. Instead of waiting until later when I may find nothing but southwest winds, I have to buck against them. It's the kind of day when things begin to get damp. All the little drips seem to either end up in the bunk or on the chart table. Got the galley stove going, trying to keep things warmed up and dried out. It's awfully noisy down there because of this uh, rattle in the mass track. And also my wind generator back there that charges the battery for the autopilot. Uh, begins to moan when it blows over 20 knots. When you're down below, it makes it sound as though the wind's really howling out here. That's a little disturbing. The race committee insists that you have your a separate generator for the uh, battery that drives the autopilot. And that has to be supplied by the wind, or the water, or the sun. In that way, they keep the race pure. In some way. I've been studying the route charts, the pilot charts, great circle charts, trying to figure out a strategy, trying to figure out what the wind's going to be when I get uh, the water. When I get a little further west, kind of a day-to-day -day guessing game. And it's fun to the race.
Hogan's down very good out of a fleet which has about 84 boats left in it. I've been thinking of the people in race headquarters making jokes about watching grass grow. And speaking of satellites and such, I've discovered that the same beams that are causing my radar detector here to be useless is also affecting my autopilot. If you'll notice that every time the radar check beeps, the, the autopilot gives a small convulsion that's picking up the same radiation. Every 52 seconds we're being swept by a beam from somewhere in outer space. If I had that time, I could tell you precisely when it's going to come off. But it'll be very shortly now. You watch for, for a shot there, see? So it's another form of pollution that our bodies are absorbing. So instead of getting involved in some good reading and getting my clothes dried and really getting into the a nice relaxed posture out here. This is what my mind has been running to today. slowly work their way around the clock. Most of the time I could barely outrun my own garbage. Now it's settled into the southwest and looks as though it's threatening to move into the west again. That's pretty nice pretty nice going right now. Notice the change in the color of the water. It's gone from that indigo color associated with the Gulf Stream to a, a kind of a milky uh, gray. I hope it means that there's not as much opposing current, although I can't tell because the sun hasn't been out enough to take sun sights. I don't know if I'm at the right latitude. 600 miles to the south is the uh, Azores High, and 600 miles to the north is a, a severe gale center. Whenever I get becalmed, I recall the horror stories of a survivor of the 1976 race who said he spent two weeks becalmed in the Azores High without clothes. This day is a bit special because it marks the end of, of two weeks. I find that I'm 280 miles ahead of my uh, uh, track the, uh, in the race four years ago, which pleases me. One of the things I would like to do is improve on my time. I crossed my track from the last race uh, yesterday. At that time I was intent on going further south. This time I'm, I'm headed straight west. Let's we'll see which strategy pays off. I find that I'm trading places with uh, Naomi James. Yesterday they showed me a 17th position. Today BBC reports her in 17th position. She's one who I would really like to beat. She certainly has youth and beauty on her side. She has a lovely boat. I've got my heavy weather go to windward sail combination up storm jib, staysail, and reef main. Sort of expecting stronger winds going along very easily, almost six knots. I'm wondering whether I shouldn't raise the Yankee instead. It takes me about 45 minutes to change from the storm jib to the Yankee or vice versa. No matter what I do, I can't seem to cut down that time. It's an awkward business. You have lower one sail and 
and uh, secure it with ties, then hank it or unhank it. Looks just about like yesterday, and I expect the next two or three days are going to look just the same. I'm approaching the Grand Banks from the east, between 45 and 46 degrees latitude, which means I'm going to be crossing a big chunk of the bank. I'll be on the bank sometime tonight. The air temperature is 50, the water temperature is 40, which means that the Labrador current is here. I really don't know which way it's taking me at this time. I must be one of the best informed single handers in the race between the BBC and my ham radio. I'm fully informed on world politics thanks to BBC. I know the first 15 boats in the race, some of their positions. I'm number 16. All this adds a lot of interest. Safety too, of course, but it comes quite an apron string and you lose some of the essence of single handing, which is self-sufficiency. It becomes quite a distraction, I find. Of course, I'm keeping up with things at home, too, which is nice. I learned yesterday one of my daughters wants to get married. She didn't invent, ask my advice the first time. But it's certainly good to know things are, when things are okay on the home front. It's certainly a plus when they know that you're okay. In any case, the radio adds a new dimension to this, this type of sailing, which I haven't had before. Whether you want it or not, it's uh, kind of a, another matter. I'm, I'm glad I've had it both ways, I think. For five days in the fog, I was kind of living with a 52-second rhythm of the being zapped with the microwaves. It becomes like a, a heartbeat or a reassuring sound. You get that clean note. It's when you hear the extra beats that you come on deck. Of course you can't see anything, but you're aware of other boats around. I try to do this, try to be aware of this while I'm asleep. Of course I'm not, but I think I am. It's interesting how you can tune yourself into the to a, a beep like that and uh, the uh, get accustomed to it. Last night was one of the great nights for sleeping. You can tell by the motion of the boat whether everything's on course and whether the wind's holding. I lie in my bunk, snooze away, and I have a, a hand bearing compass around my neck. I can sight through this and uh, keep a check on the course. It's like a telltale compass. It's a lazy man's way of keeping the check on on the uh, on the course without getting up law says it will pay for this fine weather tomorrow the weather forecast today called for northwest winds 10 to 20 knots proves that you can't build your race strategy around weather, weather uh, man's forecast. I don't know why the weathermen shouldn't be required to eat their words sometimes. I really think they could try harder. 
they knew that this is a very weak high pressure ridge coming through here and there wouldn't be any strong northwesterly flow. I don't know why they couldn't take a sabbatical once in a while and, and experience the results of their own forecast. It should be a requirement of the job. I'm 175 miles out of Newport. Should have been there today. It's an exercise in patience, which all sailors should learn anyway. I thought I had a pretty good race going, but I seem to have a knack for falling into holes in the wind. This is a real one. I've been sitting out here for 16 hours. Fog listed about two hours ago, so at least I can see the horizon. I know exactly where I am now, but that isn't doing me any good. I was even getting used to the fog. I've been sitting in it so long. I've been out here for 25 days listening to a great deal of weather information. More often than not, it's absolutely wrong. I say, boo to the weatherman. Well, it's a good day to get on with my baking. Wouldn't hurt to get in a shave either.